So assessing neuromotor readiness for learning is actually a training manual intended primarily for teachers and educators working within schools. It came about because we were, we were starting to train teachers generally. Um, they were going back to their schools and saying we cannot implement the clinical individualized program in school and we need something that is shorter, is easier to use and can be used with a larger number of children all at once. So it was really trying to find a solution to that problem that I extrapolated from our two-hour individual assessment, a se series of short screening tests which would enable a teacher to identify in 15 minutes are there sufficient signs of neuromotor immaturity in this child or this group of children to say they, they are at risk of underachieving as a result of it and can I do something within the class-based environment to help. So part of it is a screening test, one for four to seven years of age, the other for children from seven years and forever upwards. And then there is a developmental movement program that's been designed to used, be used with an entire class of children under teacher supervision for 10 minutes a day for one academic year. So instead of assessing a child in a clinical setting and tailoring exercises to the profile of that child, this starts at the beginning of motor development and takes the children sequentially through a program over the course of a year so they can replicate that first year of motor development without having to pull one child out and make them different. And we have been, or I have been, very surprised by how successful it has been. I thought that it would always be the second choice compared to a clinical program, but in schools where it's been piloted, and you've had children who didn't need it mixed in with children who did need it, all doing the same exercises together. One of the biggest surprises has been the children who were not thought of as being in need also made greater progress than was expected, not in the exercises, but in things like ability to sit still, pay attention, playground behaviour, and in some cases, if they needed it, in reading and writing and academic skills. So um, there is a, a large body of research that's been done on this over a quite a long period of time, of which the first one was done in Northern Ireland in 2004 and 2005, commissioned by the Department of Education Northern Ireland and carried out in six mainstream primary schools. And what they found was that using the physical screening test, 48% of the four to five-year-olds and 35% of eight to nine-year-olds had significant incidents of neuromotor immaturity. This is in mainstream schools where no other problems have been identified. They then compared the younger children's physical tests to educational assessments at baseline and found that there was a correlation between less mature physical skills and lower educational performance. Now, I was horrified 20 years ago when these statistics came out because if they were in any way representative of the general population. They suggested that nearly half of children are not fully ready for school in terms of their physical skills at the time of school entry and are therefore probably going to underachieve in one or several aspects of education without ever being recognised. And that 35% are still showing similar signs for three to four years later, which is a very similar figure to those children who have n not reached the expected standards in literacy at the end of primary school, according to government figures year upon year. Now, I'm not saying that the physical immaturity is the cause in all those cases, but in my view, if some of those physical factors were identified and were corrected in all children at the time of school entry, there is much that could be done to prevent unnecessary underachievement in those ch children in the future. So the second part of that was the intervention program where they found that there were significantly greater improvements on the neuromotor measures in children who did the program compared to those who didn't and compared to a group who just did general movements of any kind. A smaller study had compared similar three groups and found that children who did any daily exercise made more progress than those who did none but they only made half as much progress as, the, as those that did a specific developmental program. So basically what it seems to be suggesting is daily movement matters. And it's something that has l got very pushed to the side in modern education, both primary and secondary. But if you have children who do have less mature motor skills, giving a specific developmental movement program can make a significant difference. 
They then looked at a much smaller group, because remember we had both good readers, poor readers, and everybody all mixed in together. They looked at those who would have fitted the criteria for the INPP program, which was that they had a reading age of below six months before starting and neuromotor immaturity. And that group made greater improvement on reading measures. All children made greater improvement on one test of nonverbal cognitive performance, the Dora Person test. So I think we can safely say from that sizable piece of research that this program is of value. A more recent study in 2017-18, which sadly was not published, but again involved more than 600 children carried out in southern Scotland, looked specifically at children growing up in deprived areas, children where there was economic poverty. And they found that the neuromotor skills of children growing up where they were in receipt of school meals and free school uniforms was considerably lower than the children who didn't need these, um, this, this support. And at the end of a school year where they'd introduced not an IMPP program, but a more general movement program for younger children, and the IMPP program for seven years of age and upwards, they found there had been a complete closure of the poverty gap in children's neuromotor skills at the end of that year. And I am absolutely gutted that it wasn't published, this study, because it seems to me it is incredibly important finding in suggesting that we could help all children to start their education on a level physical playing field if only we reintroduced standardized screening of children's physical skills at the time of school entry and at key stages throughout the school career. To, to identify these children. So this school program does something towards that, both in identifying and in remediation. But it's primarily intended for teachers who will use it in a school setting with a whole class, and it's not aimed at parents to try and go in and select or guess which exercises to use.